To understand how mobile devices are shaping the internet, it's useful to start off to thinking about a little bit how mobile devices are different than other types of computers that connect to the internet. So this device, this smartphone that I have is quite powerful, quite capable, and very useful, but it is different in a variety of ways from the desktop on my, uh, the desktop, you know, under my desk and from the laptop that, that I use on a daily basis. And those differences have pretty important effects on how the internet is changing. Because on some level, the internet is a function of the devices that connect to it. So how are mobile devices different? So a lot of this comes down to form factor. Mobile devices are smaller than uh, other types of devices. So even than your typical laptop, a mobile device might be four or five times smaller by volume. And what does this mean? So this has a bunch of different consequences. Um, they are less powerful because there is simply less room to put powerful processing units, the same amount of memory that I would find on another device, huge you know, hard drives that might take up a certain amount of space. Now, there, I'll, I'll, it's interesting because there's quite a bit of miniaturization that's gone on in the computing world. And so I might be able to fit a desktop uh, processor, a big BP 32 or 64 core desktop processor into this smartphone. I might be able to with some clever engineering. Here's the problem. I can't keep it cool. So there are other the constraints that come along with the smaller form factor. For example, I can't get a heat sink into this thing. So even if I could you know, fit physically a desktop class processor onto this device, it would get so hot in your pocket it would burn you. And it would, you know, the, the cores would get too hot and they would have to turn off periodically to avoid melting and, and damaging themselves and stuff like that. So there, the small form factor comes along with other constraints in terms of the physical, um, the, the so physical limits of this device. So other differences between this, this and other devices. So the, the smallness also uh, creates energy constraints. So these devices are battery powered and because they're so much smaller than laptop computers, you might say my laptop computer is battery powered too. You know, why is it so much more of a challenge for a smartphone? If you open up a laptop computer, you will find that an enormous amount of space now is taken up within that computer by batteries. And you know, so like the, let me show you this. So for this, um, so for this MacBook, Air right here. I've I've disassembled one of these before, and pretty much this whole bottom part down here is all batteries. It's just a bunch of different lithium-ion batteries, different cells stacked next to each other, um, and that's why you get you know a reasonable or a decent battery life out of this type of machine. In contrast, this thing has like one battery, so it's maybe one of multiple cells that would fit inside a larger laptop computer. Obviously, desktop computers and servers have no problems with this at all. They've got wires bringing power right to them, and so. So while power is a concern in data centers for other reasons, cost primarily, um, power is not necessarily a constraint that, that those devices feel in the same way. So I've got battery to power devices. Now that goes back to the less powerful as well because a big, um, huge CPU might consume too much energy to last an entire day on a mobile device. Um, obviously, you know, in order for the device to be mobile, I need I need it to be wireless. So the radios that um, are present on this device mean that it's always going to be uh, using various types of wireless communication. And frequently mobile devices will have multiple different types of wireless communication that they can take part in. So, you know, this smartphone probably has a Bluetooth radio on it. It has various types of cellular radios for connecting to different kinds of cellular networks. It has a Wi-Fi chipset and a variety of other things. Um, so, you know, the fundamental wireless nature of these devices also comes into play. And so, uh, oh, finally, oh, big part of being smaller too, smaller display. Smaller display and different input devices. So not only is the display on this thing only a couple inches across, but there's no keyboard. Um, you know, it, it fundamentally has a touch screen and that's the primary way of interacting with it. And so this creates constraints as well. Uh, we interact with these devices differently. On a big desktop computer with four monitors, I might have five different windows open that I can all see at the same time. On a smartphone, I might have one. 
So I focus a lot more on the same app. The input style is very different. I can't type as fast. I can't navigate as fast. I don't have a pointing device. I have to use my fingers. Um, and I just can't see as much at the same time. And so all of these differences um, that you know, characterize mobile devices are really starting to drive the design of the internet itself because more and more people that we're bringing online, new people that are being connected to the internet, are you know, primarily in places where their sole connection to the internet is a mobile device. They don't have a desktop at home, they don't own a laptop computer, they own a smartphone or some sort of phone that has some sort of internet capabilities, and that's how they check email, that's how they watch things online, that's how they browse the web. And so, you know, the, the, the web that you know, started off in the internet that started off pr presuming these big, bulky computers that were going to be plugged in and powered all the time, and then 20 years later we had these desktop computers with big monitors, that's all changing. And it's changing really quickly, and some of the way that the internet is changing is really being driven by these fundamental differences uh, that you see on mobile devices.